What if I told you that this closed terrarium will outlive you? This terrarium here has been around for over 400 days, with a multitude of small creatures, plants, and fungus having found a way to survive despite being cut off from the rest of nature. So, how many bugs live in here? Well, it's impossible to know an absolute number, but probably well over a thousand. But it'd be almost impossible to count. So a, a better question to investigate would be, how many different kinds of bugs or species of animals live in this closed ecosystem? Let's find out. First off is a brown centipede. Centipedes are the only true predators that live in this terrarium. Using the large antenna on their head, these centipedes hunt the other small bugs inside. Their preference is to hunt by darkness and are only rarely seen during the day. I'm not sure exactly what this one is feeding on, possibly a springtail that it recently killed. The small white centipede nearby is no doubt one of the centipede's children, learning from its parent how to hunt and navigate the environment. Though, truth be told, uh, this larger centipede might appear large um, with this magnification, but is still only a fraction of the size of a fully grown centipede. It too is still learning how to hunt and is often unsuccessful in actually snagging a meal. Here you can see the fully grown centipede, a centipede that I rarely if ever see anymore, catch a springtail and drag it underneath a bed of moss to feed on it. The brown centipede is not the only species of centipede in this terrarium. There's also a soil centipede, but as the name suggests, it spends almost all of its time underground, and this is the only shot that I've ever gotten of it. So what do centipedes prey on in this closed ecosystem? Isopods, for one. Isopods are the most obvious and, and easy to spot inhabitant of this terrarium. These small creatures, which are more closely related to crabs than insects, graze on just about anything and everything inside this terrarium. They're omnivores, eating plants, fungus, detritus, and even dead carcasses of other creatures, though they'll rarely, if ever, attack or eat creatures that are still alive. The centipedes in this terrarium, even the fully grown ones, are probably not capable of easily taking down a fully grown isopod, but they no doubt keep the population in check by targeting its young, who not only have softer shells, but are also much slower and can be less cautious when out in the open, especially once they get to the age where they're not following mom around all day. But, at least from my observations, the bulk of a centipede's diet is the springtail. Springtails are one of the most numerous of inhabitants visible to the naked eye inside of this terrarium. There's at least two species of springtails. Population-wise, it would appear the dominant species is this larger white or cream-colored springtail. The other species is a smaller, darker springtail that is iridescent in color. There could be more varieties, but many of the springtails are very small, difficult to get a good shot of, especially with any level of magnification. And honestly, it's hard for me to know which ones are nymphs and which ones are truly different, smaller species. So for those keeping track at home, we're already at five species. And by the way, I started this video off by referring to this as a closed terrarium. What do I mean by that? I mean this tank is generally closed off with a lid on top, meaning everything inside survives on its own with the only input from the outside world being a light source and the ambient temperature of the room that it resides in. Other than that, I do open it up to wipe the glass of condensation for these videos. Uh, filming a video like this would be almost impossible otherwise and of a much, much lower quality. But that's it. And like I said, these terrariums and their aquatic cousins can survive for many years, almost indefinitely, as long as the temperature is managed and a light source is present. Pretty cool, huh? Next, we have the millipede. These guys and gals are absolutely adorable. 
and it's fascinating to watch them navigate the terrain with their multitude of legs. Like the isopods, they are not predators, instead eating mostly plants and, and refuse. There are two distinct species of millipedes in here. The flat-backed millipede and the spirobilid millipede, which literally just means round-backed millipede. So we got a flat-backed millipede and a round backed millipede. That's about as specific as I'm going to get on the actual species of these, but they are distinct species. And it seems like they've established uh, breeding populations uh, quite easily. This spring, or at least earlier this summer, I was already seeing young of a new generation for both of these species. So that's pretty cool to see that their species is likely to continue for quite some time in this terrarium. But if you thought the millipedes were cute, wait until you see the snails inside this ecosystem these snails have proved to be quite resilient over the past year and have also established breeding populations i'm not sure if they have any natural predators in this terrarium i suppose centipedes could and maybe do prey on them though i'm not sure how common that is in the wild and some snail species have been known to prey on each other there are two species of snails that i've identified in here uh, this one being probably a type of disc snail, though it could be a type of glass snail. It grows to be about a half a centimeter in diameter, five millimeters. And this snail, uh, which I believe to be a type of wara snail or vertigo snail. Vertigo snail, I think, is a pretty cool name for these. They're similarly sized. These are both very small snails. Uh, one of them just has more of a swirly cone-shaped shell versus the more spirally disc of the other species. These snails are omnivores, feeding on plant matter, detritus, and like I said, possibly other snails or snail eggs, though I haven't witnessed that in this terrarium. Of all the creatures inside, these small insects are probably the most chill. I believe they're a type of weevil, maybe a garden weevil. They mostly eat plants, but don't seem to be overfeeding or killing too much of the moss or other plants inside. Honestly, I'm not sure how many of these weevils are inside of this terrarium, a few at least, but I've yet to see any of their larvae or eggs, so I'm not sure if they're actually breeding or if eventually they're going to die out. Springtails are small, but even smaller are these tiny insects referred to as mites? And, and that's about as technical as I'm going to get with the species names. There's two kinds of mites inside, this black mite and the less frequently seen reddish mite. But, but hold up, what did I say earlier? Centipedes are the only true predators that live in this terrarium. Yeah, I was wrong. Meet the rove beetle. This bug, which I don't think I've ever got on video in this terrarium, is indeed a predator. It's pretty small, so it's probably limited to eating springtails and mites, but they also haven't been studied super well because, well, there's a ton, I'm talking thousands of different species. And some have been known to eat dead plants and the like. But I think that for now, we can definitely add this to the list of predators joining the two centipede species. And that leaves one last bug. It's rarely seen during the day, but may have more impact on this environment than any other creature inside. Any guesses? It's the earthworm. This terrarium has quite a few earthworms, though, like I said, they're rarely seen during the day. They eat a lot of dead organic matter, maybe more than the rest of the creatures combined, and probably feed on some living plants too. They help aerate the soil too, which is important, and I might add, are a prey species of centipedes. That might seem like a lot of species, 14. But what's not inside? Quite a bit actually. Slugs. Lots of terrestrial beetle species. In fact, I think the rove beetle is the only species of beetle inside. Ants, spiders, pseudoscorpions, aphids, bees, moths, butterflies, caterpillars, flies, dragonflies, and the list goes on and on. But 14 species, that's pretty good diversity after a year of seclusion.
that's generally how it works with these closed terrariums. They start as quite diverse, but even in just the first few weeks, first few months, that diversity decreases sharply and then levels off. And so it'll be interesting to see in a year's time or five years from now, 10 years from now, how many of these species will still be present. So that's how a terrestrial ecosystem has fared over a year. But what about an aquatic version? Check out this video on the screen to see what lives in a jar of lake water. And you'll even get to see me open it up after a full year being sealed. The smell was, well, it was something else. Hope you enjoyed this video today and I'll see you all next time.